Hello and welcome to Decorate It. My name is Mary and this is Wes and tonight is episode 18. We're talking about weaves. So weaves are the topic tonight. Have you ever done a weave before? Nope. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I've done a few. I think the very first one, I didn't stick it in here, but the first weave I tried was that shark. Uh, it was in the back of thread art. Yeah. yeah, it's on that green rod over there. And whenever I did it, we didn't have looms, we didn't have weaving jigs, we didn't have any of that other stuff. But I, I actually took cardboard and just like cut slots in it to hold my thread on both sides. Mm -hmm. And it was very tedious, and it worked, but it wasn't the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, I haven't tried weaves because I've watched you try weaves, and I want no part of it. They're kind of frustrating I don't, for me. I don't want no part of it. They're, um, they're beautiful to look at. Beautiful to see on rods. I want no part in making one. <laughs> the prep for it is what yeah, gets nope. me. Because you have to make sure that each individual thread is like cut and laid perfectly side by side on that tape. And you have to find center of your part pattern. So one doesn't start it. It could be like 20 or... 17 and that's that's what starts center and then you have to lay everything to the left and right my problem of it. is you don't know if you if you've messed up like tragically messed up until you're finished that is true sometimes you can catch it if you have a place um where you're flopping where, them all back where but. everything goes to back to the right and you can see what's happening but and everything is constantly moving and you never can actually see it you won't notice the mistake until you're finished. I think one of the best stories about that was um, here at Tanaka, but he had, uh, I believe, um, he did that dragon. That mm -hmm. was the 360. Took him like a year or so to Took do it. Took him an entire year. He worked on it little by little for 365 days. He got to the end of the year. He finished it, and there was a mistake, and he sliced it off. <laughs> I don't know if I could work on a project for an entire year and be like, oops, there's an oopsie, and just cut it off. I think I might have to let something slide unless it was massive. What about going on eight years? What? What are you, what are you grinning at me like that for? What? There's, there's a project. You've been working for eight years on it. What? My rod. Why would I have to cut anything off of that? I don't know yet. There's nothing wrong with what's on your rod. Would you quit poking fun at me? I swear. <laughs> you and that dang rod. I told you. All you got to do. All I got to do. All you got to do. My anniversary gift. <laughs> all I got to do. You can help me out some with some stuff. Anyways. All it needs is an adjustment on the I dang <laughs> grip. I swear to God. The other thing about weaves is that, um, one, you have to have a left list. Yep. There is visual weave, which you can get that through Mudhole or through Thread Central by from Dave. And it's a really easy program. You basically take whatever image or font. Basically, if you're doing a font, you can kind of use Word to, like, type it out and then import it in. Um, same thing. There is also another program running around called Pick to Weave. That one's it's a little harder to get right now. It is very hard to find, but there's places to find it. But it's the same concept. You take an image and you import it, and the programs will tell you you can uh, like adapt the thread size and tell them how big you want it, how wide you want it, and it'll generate you a left list. Mm -hmm. The old school way, if you don't have Dale Clemens' book, the Thread Art book, he has some patterns in there, and there's some patterns available. I know that Mark Krause was selling some. I'm sure some of the other um, big weavers are also selling some too. But they'll they'll go ahead and hand you the left list so you don't have to do it. But if you're doing it the old school way and trying to take an image and recreate it for a weave, then you just get some graph paper and you draw this thing out there or print it on there if you can. And each little box represents a thread. So everything going from the top to the bottom is your design threads and everything working from left to right is your wrapping threads. Um, I did that for a couple for the first, I did the, the shark was my first one. And then I started doing people's initials yep. and then I put your mom's Nana on there on her mm -hmm. rod and those were all done with graph paper and I just sketched it out that way. So I was a little bit of, now what about the thread sizing and all like, can you use any thread on it? Um, well, I mean, you really can. I like to use Madeira for the design threads because it's so much smaller, but sometimes that limits you on how much detail will be seen. It depends on the patterns, but typically whatever size design thread you want to use, it's easier if you bump up your wrap thread, mm -hmm. your 
winding thread going around your background is what it becomes to a larger size i know a lot of people love to use b for uh, weaves and or c sometimes but obviously the larger that your background thread is the more it's going to make the design thread stand out because it's going over a larger diameter but it's not a good idea to use a and a or a or c and c or something like that because you're not going to get as much um tension from the background thread to hold it in place so but you always want your wrapping thread to be larger yeah okay it's easier that way because it will actually keep it from getting all kinds of twisted and stuff the other thing is as you go through it you do have to continue to keep shifting it don't run all the way through your pattern expect you to be able to pack everything because it's not going to work and you do want to keep making sure you have tension on both sides and make sure you don't pull your threads out on the other side it's there's a whole lot of things to to look at and take into consideration and there's some great youtube to, uh, tutorials i know mark kraus did one from mud hole a long time ago it's actually one of the ones that i use to kind of refresh my brain or whenever i sit down to do them because i don't do but a handful every once in a while the last weave i did was last year for that uh fly guy and i put his initials in mm -hmm. i don't do very complicated weaves i only do maybe one or two colors just because i don't want to deal with the multi-layer you know, I don't want to sit there for three and four days. Plus, we have all these little tiny hands that like to come running in here. And Lord help if they turned it. <laughs> or they Ooh, messed what up. does this do? <coughs> or they messed up where my threads were and they came in and like hit it. <laughs> that would drive me nuts. Just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. But I know thread art from Dale Clemens has got some really good instructions. I mean, like I read that part that's in the back. Is He's got a bunch of weave patterns back there. And I was able to do the shark that he provided. So pretty pretty good book if you don't have it for decorative wraps it's also great for basic intro into weaving in my opinion <laughs> and it will be added to your list too <coughs> what list your amazon list oh yeah my my recommendations that mm -hmm. i tell people that they should get because the clemens books you can only get on amazon right now as That's far as i know about where the only place I w i've ever found it was there um along with some of the other books that we've got that aren't Clemens books, we got them through Amazon. Mm -hmm. So we need to add all those too. Yep. Uh, the only other thing I want to say about weaves is you want to try to keep them to the top of the blank. I mean, having a little bit of wrappage isn't a big deal, but some of your larger weaves, it's really hard to read sometimes what it's supposed to be without getting up really close to it. Mm -hmm. And even the super detailed ones, you can, if you can see what it is from a slight distance away from it, then I think it's good, you know, but you don't want it to wrap too much. And you'll see some of the examples that the Southern Rod Builders contributed tonight. They've got some of the larger scaled ones, some of the more finute by like Doc Ski and Italo put some stuff in tonight. So in Travis Husky, people I think that are, are amazing weavers. So we've got a lot of different things mm -hmm. to, to look at. So I know there's different styles of, weave jigs mm -hmm. um what's the difference between like the rectangular ones that are flat the rectangular ones that are bent and the wonder weaver that wraps around well the wonder weaver is a 360 degree one not many people are going to try to jump on that train because it's very there's a lot of details involved in a 360 weave um i haven't personally used it we had one and we sold it and i don't know why i decided to sell it and kind of regretful of that but it is what it is i can find another one um, so I can't really speak too much on that, but I can speak for homemade jigs out of cardboard, the flat ones, because that's what I started with. Cause mm -hmm. Mark gave me all of his, um, templates that he had and for various size blanks and stuff. Plus mud hole has the easy weave, um, flat and it's the flat. And then there's the bent ones where you can, we took, what was it? Aluminum that you bent and we know it was it. actually, um, uh square pvc tubing mm. and did it and we cushioned the bottom side of it so it wouldn't scratch it but put a piece of foam on the bottom and so the flat ones are to me easier to set up because they're everything's boop right up top mm -hmm. but they also have a tendency to have the design thread spread out as the tension goes if you're not continuously keeping it packed the ones that are bent make it easier to keep it tapered to the blank but generally speaking, they're all going to have about the same dramas. They're still going to try to spread out. It's just you go from having everything running up top to having kind of like a V shape with a hole running through the middle. Um, it's a good idea if you decide to make your own or if you buy some to 
take the end that's facing towards your weave and put you can even break off the back ends of uh, paint um, paint brushes the little plastic ones and put two little like two little holes glue those in there so all of the keeps it tight keeps it all right running through the middle instead of it spreading out over the thing mm-hmm. kind of a channel yeah it gives it a, a channel funnel. a funnel to run through funnel Let's use some big words so that's basically the little bit of information i know about them like i probably have done maybe 10 or 12 weaves of my life and they've all been pretty simple simply because i don't have the patience to get them set up it's one of those weird things. I just, I do a decorative wrap. I'll take hours on grips. I'll take hours on doing all this other stuff. But it, for me to sit down and like patiently put those threads side by side, it drives my, drives my brain yeah, up the wall. I would do a weave, but nobody's going to pay my price to do it. <laughs> but it's it's not bad. Like once everything's set up and you start moving things left and right, like it's actually kind of yeah, nice. See, here's the problem. When's the last time you saw me sit still? For that amount of time, focused, and finish it in one one setting. <laughs> you don't. You never do. <laughs> the only time that you will sit. It takes a lot of money for me to do that. <laughs> the only time that you will sit there and do something and finish it is if you're marbling. That's it. Yeah, because it's like five minutes. <laughs> if you're marbling, you're happy. You'll come in and just marble. And it's like, what are you doing? I'm marbling. <laughs> Can you finish wrapping guides? No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so let's take a, a ganda. Let's take a look at what Southern contributed tonight from their previous works. And we start with Adam Clements. So when I first glanced at this I picture. I know what that says already. Yep. When I first glanced at it, I had to turn my head sideways because I couldn't tell what it was saying. What does this it say? This is the way. This is the way. Mandalorian tribute there. That's a really cool looking weave. I actually love it. Like, only thing, only, only. Only thing I wish is that it was taken up and down so that you could appreciate it a little bit more instead of having it turned sideways. But still cool. Another one by Adam Clements. So holy details, dude. That is the fireman shield. It says protect. Some sort of fireman shield, yeah. Yeah, like. like fireman shield. <laughs> what was Apparently, that? Yeah. What was that? I'm trying to hold in <laughs> the, the draw that I was doing earlier. Ooh, <laughs> cut it out. That is a lot of details. That is a lot of, that's a multi-layer weave right there. It's got the blue is the background, so that's the turning. And you can you can tell there's barely few areas where the blue is popping through. And then it's got the red, the green, a different color. So two different greens, a red or an orange. I can't quite tell. It looks red, but, and then black and yellow. Like, holy, holy multi-layers. Holy multi-layers. That is something I don't want to sit through and have to do. I'm going to go ahead and say kudos for doing the white background because that's hard to do. And a lot of different colored blues going on in that as well. It means lightning strike. And there's a lightning strike on it. In Italian. That's what that is. Okay. See? Very cool, Adam. All right. So David Dicer coming in with some progress photos. So this one, he's doing a lot of text. Uh, this right now, that he, what he has weaved is casting for... Casting for athletics. Yep, casting okay. for athletics. So this was for a school, if I remember correctly, that he was doing either donating the rod or was trying to get a fishing team something going. Or I can't remember exactly, but the little bee. Look at all the details in the bee. But this is how they look set up. So David actually was at our booth two years ago. He made his own jigs. And he has them. Um, he has the bent ones, and he has them running at an angle. I think he used foam to put it into, and you just cut little slots, and you number it, and bam, you've got a jig. But that's what it looks like set up where everything's on the right-hand side. So everything on the right-hand side is not being seen. But once it gets moved to the left, now it goes over the thread, and when it gets moved back, now you have a little, what I call the pixels that create the pattern. Hence the left list. Left list. Anything on the left will be seen. Anything on the right will not. Another one of David Dysert's. So he's got somebody's name with the Steelers logo. Like, for yeah. sure, this is John. Yes, it does say John. Why don't don't start with me right now? It does say John, and it's Steelers <laughs> logo. I swear. Let me make this bigger. So he does a lot of names and or like that one says Dirty Souths. 
squash. Squatching. Squatching. Or and I'm deals. Like he does a lot of lettering and stuff on his. I'm pretty sure that said Tim deals. I know who did that. Yep. So, Doxky, first off, amazing dragon. Like, we'll zoom back in it for a minute, but I had a really hard time placing where to put his name because I didn't want to cover up any of the amazing details, so I just stuck it on his tie-off. So, Doc, forgive me for covering up the tie-off, but the dragon is the show, 100%. I think so awesome. Look how much is in that. I'd never do one like that, but I love looking at it. The scales, like each of the scales is like a turquoise or purple, and then it's got a highlight wrapped like around it, and then a background. Like there's so much detail in this. And I love how he takes his photos, so if it does wrap a little bit, he turns it and then stitches it together so it looks like one continuous thing because you can tell that it's multiple angles of the rod from the tie-offs, but that is just so cool. And what's really cool is we get to meet him next this coming weekend. Mm -hmm. Whoop, whoop. Going to Foley. You're driving the whole way. No, I'm not. All right. Another one of Doc Skis. This is an amazing, like, landscape. Like, the sea with the rocks. Just. And he has a penny there, so you can see how big it is. Like, it's teeny tiny details. Wow. Look at that. I think I have to go in just a little bit more to appreciate the rocks. That's wild. Isn't that insane? Can you imagine how long that took? I don't want to. That's the kind of stuff that I love. Would I would love to do, but I don't think I have the patience for it right now. Especially the setup. The setup is what would drive me nuts. Not I'd me. have the patience in retirement to do that. <laughs> that is El Arco at Cabo San Lucas. Cabo San Lucas. Okay, fine. I'm going to butcher the stuff anyways. You know that. Another one of Doc Ski. So this is two different ones that he did, probably for a matching set of rods. Just killer work. Um, the mahi is it a mahi yeah okay look two really awesome kind of paired up rods like the details in these things it's just weaves are a whole different beast another, like, another jesus another set of duck skis with the blue marlins like two completely different like one's got a black background and then the other one's got the blue the difference of the black against the blue versus like the the one on the bottom we kind of lose his 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 bill. No, his bill a little bit, but you can still tell that it's there. But just beautiful work. Just, <laughs> just, I can't, I can't even. And this one, this look, I think this was a painting because it's signed down here at the bottom. And he replicated this thing. To a T. To a complete T. Minus, you know, like the clouds and stuff in the background. And then took the signature and put it on there as well. So that the artwork was claimed by the artist. Ain't that crazy? That's wild. Mm -hmm. Just and go back to appreciate the full view of this. That is on point. Now he took the first layer. I mean, you don't need all of that for the entire thing, obviously. But I mean, that's just killer. The rendition he did. I mean, this shark is kind of like one of my favorites of his. Other than the dragon's my by far the one that he shared my favorite. But this one's just fun. This muscly her shark. <laughs> Her. Her. Girl roar. Girl roar. Um, with all the rippling muscles and everything's got highlights and lowlights. Like, that's just, and the teeth. And some of that, some of those teeth, there's only like one or two threads on them. Keeping that packed and cleaned and tight. Oof. Another one of Doc Skis. Once again, trying hard not to cover up any of his artwork. I love how he does the fish. And also just kind of incorporates a little bit of the background right. to go with it and make it look like it's in its environment. So I put Italo's name on here, even though it was on the left-hand side, just in case people didn't realize that that was the tag for him. But amazing Indian head, but just the details on this Indian alone. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Italo did a zebra. That one's so clean. Mm -hmm. And I love how he chose the white background, so it just kind of pops out at you. Very cool. Another one of Italo's, Bugs Bunny, laying down eating a carrot. I think what I like most about weaves is there's really not a limitation. Because you can literally take a picture and put it in a weave. Mm -hmm. you just there's no, to... there's nothing to say you can't yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. 100%. You just have to be able to 
some of the lines you have to kind of adjust when you go in and use the programs and stuff and you know but for overall you're going to get almost point for point the exact thing that you're supposed to be you're trying to replicate another one of italo's coliseum so he took it and made it red and green and black outlines popeye another one by italy italo mike <laughs> i just love that the cartoons get put on here mm -hmm. you know <laughs> like this is the stuff that we were watching growing up <laughs> bugs bunny popeye Oh, there's some more in here, too. Another one by Italo. Danny Tre Trejo. I don't know what character he's playing, but that definitely is his face. Another one of Italo's. Jimmy Superfly Snucka. All right, another one of Italo's. Awesome details in this fish. I love how it has, like, the, the ombre effect going from the blue to the green all the way down to the lightest color at the bottom. Jeff Vatican. This weave was done 25 years ago. Wow. From... How this picture was taken, I would have argued that this was a sticker. <laughs> yeah. Complete mermaid. Can't really tell that there's any thread involved in it. It just looks very put together. Just a typical naked mermaid with red hair. All right, so John Blaney coming in with um, a really, this is a logo. Uh, this was an, a uh, retirement gift. I was going to say retirement gift. Yeah, but I'm just a nice logo from the place that he worked. This is John Suchins, another one of our childhood cartoons. Name it. I don't remember his name. I just called him the alien. It's Marvin Martian. Thank you. It's Marvin Martian. I just remember uh, he's the alien. Marvin Martian. And my dad will actually do a pretty good impression of Marvin the Martian. Does he? Yeah. You've never heard it? No, I've never heard it. Look at the details in this thing. Holy Toledo is what I got to say. Yeah, that's really good. For how small that is. It's, you know, it's super tight. It's super clean. Like, that's very nicely done. Very, very nicely done. John's got... It's Yukon Cornelius. <laughs> Look at the details on him, too. He's super cute. That was one of my favorite animations to watch, though, around Christmas. Mm -hmm. I'll still watch it. And there's Bumble. The Abominable Snowman. With his happy little face. Also by John Suchin. <laughs> but the details in this, like crazy what you can do with it them. really is like i have to give a lot of credit to these people for sitting down and doing that i just hope they're charging enough for them and then this lineup by john suchin so we have dracula we have frankenstein we have the bride of frankenstein sven Gulli, just learned that tonight werewolf and the creature from the black creature lagoon. from the black lagoon dun 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 what a lineup and they did custom grips with them. Custom grips. I mean, like, hold on, let's get a big picture. So, I mean, we start with these custom grips at the bottom. You go through the trim bands, and you got the weaves, and then he does tigers on with dragon scales, the modified dragon scales, and wraps. Like, this is the whole shebang right here, you know? Another one of John's. There's actually three in this one. I like that deer in the back. Yeah, you see the, the deer? And then there's some kind of dragon symbol it almost looks like the mortal Kombat symbol but it's not quite over there on the right but i don't know what the the weave in the middle is when i first glanced at it i thought it was the roadrunner but that's not the roadrunner i thought roadrunner or daffy but that's, definitely not no but whatever it is it's got details in it and looks pretty cool like i said i should have asked everybody but that deer i just want to highlight the deer yeah, i know that's, that's not the highlight of the picture the but that detail deer, in that is the deer crazy is immaculate so this is one of mine i was trying to make a weave of Holt buster's head because originally i had a different style grip in mind for your rod before i changed it to Holt buster's upper body and his head and to be honest i ran through this one obviously it is a two layer i did do a two layer for your rod but then it was it was very compressed in this one and i went back and changed it and then i nixed the idea of doing it went a different route but proof that mary does weaves every once in a while probably one of my cooler ones both tiles had weaves on them near the grip i had i took the panther like the Claw mark. The claw mark, and I actually use. elongated it a little bit because it was really short whenever I was drawing it out. And then I put the keep pounding. I just picked a random font and just put it on there so it was really clean. The heart that I put on... Tim's heart rod. Tim's heart rod. I did do a heart a long time ago. So this is the one that is my most recent, and it's there's nothing special about this, guys. Like, it's just... I took a font that I liked, and I turned it into a weave, 
what I enjoy about this weave is what I did with the feathers. It's not even about the weave because yeah, I just it's not even it's not even about the weave. It's about the feathers because I took the grizzly hackles and I wound it around the rod instead of running up straight up and down, which was a pain. But you know, that's yeah. how you do a saw blade. And that's how you do an instant saw blade. Take some grizzly <laughs> hackles and seepy them down. <laughs> I don't recommend it. It's a pain. I actually had to take the heat gun out and spot for spot. I had to break the the um, quill, basically, and put the CP on it and then take the heat gun and heat it up so it would dry real quick. And just, it, it took forever. To, it took longer to put the feathers on there than it did <laughs> to do the weave. <laughs> Seriously. Skip it on to some more people with better talent than I Night have. Night Train. Night Train by Michael Ward. It looks like he's done two different rods. Nicely done. It's the hardest thing in the world to keep stuff straight and in the line. Mm-hmm. Nailed it. Another one of Michael Ward. So now Michael does a lot of football teams and stuff like that, college stuff. I've seen several that he's done in the open area of a real seat. Oh, yeah. He's got two in here tonight. He utilizes space where most people don't think to put things, which is why I actually enjoy watching some of the stuff that he does. I'm going to assume this is North Carolina State. Just because of the NCS. Good job. Just because of the NCS. Good job. Sometimes the blonde doesn't go to the brain. But he's accounted for, this is the only thing that's the tricky part, is he's accounted for the the width that the threat the weave added and the amount of epoxy in order for that seat to also go on there. Mm-hmm. Well, he, and he did a last coat of epoxy after the seat was on there. Right, and I would expect that. But I'm saying, like, he's accounted yeah. for the width whenever he was sizing it. Yeah. Another one on my solid color Marines logo. Yeah, you like that, Good right? Good job. Yeah, he's over here grinning at me, guys. And then the Bulldogs USMC. I like, I, I appreciate single-toned ones. Like, I really do. I like, do. one color. And when, especially when it fits in the aesthetic. Another one by Michael. I would say Baltimore Ravens. And this one. This is the other one that Michael mm-hmm. put in with the flag and the gray aesthetic on the real seat. Nailed it. I love that he put it with the flags waving has some curves to it but this flag is on point and i love how like the stars even like came out and everything so. yeah that looks really good it's very nicely done all right so this one there's usually that famous saying with it or a fallen soldier some gave all all gave some even though it's not in color you t- i typically see it just when it's like a solid silhouette but this is nicely done so michael ward again if you guess who this is i'm gonna be astonished i don't know who it is I know it's some college or some sports team, but that, that's all I got. I don't know who it is. Hokies. That tells me nothing. Virginia Tech. That's the Virginia Tech. Do you believe so? I don't know. Like, I don't watch sports. I never kept up with them. For that to be the very first weave that he's ever done. Pretty good. He did a multi-layer right off the bat. It's absolutely awesome. Once again, don't know this logo. That's the same team that lost. Still don't tell me nothing. NC State Wolfpack. Okay. so Makes this sense now. Michael Ward. With the wolf pack. Very nicely done. That's a lot of details in that little dude. That is. Robert Gold. So he actually, we're going to see the finished product before the work in progress. St. Louis College something is uh, all I got. Pharmacy. Mm. So it's their. College of Pharmacy, yeah. Very nicely done. It's obviously, if you see it from the upwards angle when you're holding it, you probably could read it a little bit easier versus trying to tilt your head to the side. That's a lot of letters. A lot of curves, a lot of... Lot That's of, a lot of work. It's a lot of work in that little area, so nicely done. This was after he just cut it, like cut the ends of, of it off. And this is a great photo. Take note, guys. The when, scales in that. Right? Like, jeez. Right. Take note. See how his threads are cut at an angle and they're feathered? That's what we need. That's what we want. Even if we're doing a decorative wrap or a dragon scale or any of that other stuff. We have to cut our threads at an angle so that when we go to wrap over them, everything lays flat and you don't have this cutoff line. Steven Stanley. Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky Wildcats. Thank you, Wes. I don't know my teams. I keep my face in threads and not on the TV. (laughs) 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 I just don't. I don't even even listen to it in the background. I just listen to music. Steven Stanley again. Do you know what this is? It's a symbol for something, but has Florida Lee and can't make out what the letters are it says 1830 at the top and it looks like it's ins but there's also like a a plus sign i'm not sure i know that's supposed to represent something but i just don't know what it is another one by stephen stanley it's dr fish i think that says mm 173 yeah nm or nm yeah nm 173 
Okay, so we're coming to one. Of, this is Stephen Stanley and coming to one of my favorite ones of the night. First off, I it's love Batman. It's not Batman. <laughs> Shut up. Do not do that to Heath Ledger. He is my favorite Joker of all time. May he rest in peace. But this is, look at the colors. Which, speaking of, I was planning on watching this after the podcast. Oh, well, we're good. <laughs> Rude. Because I'll be in here editing. This is phenomenal. I've seen all this All the detail week. just... It's, it's on point. Like, crazy. all the little lines. I love how the eye, he blacked out the eyes. How it kind of disappears into the background because of mm-hmm. the fading. Like, this... Ugh. Coming out of the shadows. I ugh. This right here re invigorates me to want to do a joker because i've always wanted to do a joker and a harley quinn rod as a set and like this reminds me that hey you want to do a joker you know i i I hate that they never got the chance to do heath ledger as the joker with harley quinn right i know tj potter coming in i do know this is the cubs where are they from no idea chicago there you go chicago cubs dun 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 cubbies the cubbies the only reason i knew it was the cubs because it says cubs (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to Mary's lack of college, or not college, lack of um, sports. Sports. I would not do good at a bar with sports teams being the... Trivia question. Trivia questions. I'd go, nope, pass it on. But this is TJ Potter. We asked TJ. I actually messaged him. I said, what is this? Because I tried to, like, I literally, on some of these things, I tried to take Google and search it with the image, and they were coming back up with, like, these bridal vases that were wrapped, which apparently that's the thing, guys. We might be able to open our market to selling to brides, and, you know, they pay a lot of Ooh, money that's for a, stuff. that's money pit. But I did message him because I was like, what is this? And he's like, you know what? I really don't know. Okay, so this is actually from Doctor Who. Yeah, but he doesn't know what it is. It's he was just, just asked to put it on the rod. He said that he it was some symbol from Doctor Who, and he actually had a request for her to send in a, a drawing of it. <laughs> and so he just put the drawing of it. So it's some representation of whatever Doctor Who the show is. And no, we haven't seen it, so I have no idea what it's referencing. And I actually kind of clicked on Doctor Who when I had like five seconds to look it up, and I didn't see anything remotely close to it. But nicely executed. Yeah, very Just clean. can't compare it to anything because I've never seen it before. T.J. Potter, which his name didn't show up very well, putting a tank on his rod. Dun, dun, That's a big dun. task. That's a big task, putting a tank on there. Tank looks nice. I love that it's got all the wheels and the gears and stuff. Yeah. T.J. Potter again. Anaheim Angels. Travis Husky coming in with a pinup. That's, that's a nice pinup. Just nicely executed. Travis Husky, nicely done. Fish. <laughs> Fish. I love it. You see the green eye? Yeah, it's got a little bit of a green eye. I do see that now. Very, very nicely done with the little pink stripe running I didn't out. notice it at first, but it's also, very subtle. Also, like how he's put his fish to where it looks like it's coming across the rod because it looks like it's swimming mm-hmm. instead of it just being in a straight line. Travis Husky, this is so nicely done. The white just looks like it's painted on there. It does. Like, there's no gaps. There's no, like, you just do not see any. Wasn't well, the white the wrapping thread on this? Mm-hmm. And then the black is the design thread? Yep. Just super nicely done. Two more. Debbie and Rod. Debbie and Rod, which I love Debbie just because it's the bright green against the blue. And then Rod, but black background with the silver. It looks like it's metallic. And to me, metallic, I weaved a metallic one time and never did it again. I don't know. Is that but metallic? I can't. I don't I say I can't It tell. doesn't reflect the same way as the metallic to the side of it but it could be a madeira because some of those gray madeiras will do that too this one i try to look up the meaning it could have three or four different ones really yeah because the purple ribbon actually represents either alzheimer's pancreatic cancer um and like two other ones like it's hmm. so i don't know if it's for alzheimer's or if it's for pancreatic cancer or one of the other two that i can't remember right now and travis husky this one is the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. Very nice. I love that. That coin that I'm always carrying around mm-hmm. is from them, from my grandfather being a lifetime member. Oh, awesome. Travis coming in again with the skull and crossbones. You know I got to love this one because it's hot pink and black, and it's a skull, <laughs> and it's got crossbones in it. Just super. I love how tight he packs his. Yeah. Because once epoxy gets on there. It just goes away. You can't tell it's red. Travis Husky again. With this amazing eagle in front of the American flag. Side note, Mm -hmm. did you know that the national bird of the USA was originally going to be the turkey? The turkey? The turkey. Okay. 
Why? Just because it was random here. trivia knowledge. So mm-hmm. you know, probably because they saw it more often. Than they saw bald eagles. I, but I think it would look bad if we were eating our national bird. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's super detailed. Um, just image like and he's even got the pupil inside the eye and i like how the stars changed their size because the flag's moving yeah like it's it, yeah it's got the wave to it mm-hmm. it's just nicely done this is travis husky's design with the seattle seahawks travis husky has the american flag but it is in letters so it he put shane and then it has the red white stripes with the blue and the stars like that's insanity you know what's even more insane it don't look like thread What's even more insane is that if you follow each of those lines and where it has the skip, you know, where the background, the background takes over, mm-hmm. none of them are out of alignment. No, not a single one. Travis That's a cool Husky. eagle. Angry eagle, but a cool eagle. And once again, the white. You look at these different, I mean, you can tell if you get really close to its thread, but I mean, imagine if we weren't zoomed in on it. It looks like it's a decal mm-hmm. or it's painted on there like it's insane the crispness I and mean, i mean let's enjoy the trimmings to go with it too great work chris kyle all right i thought that's who it was but i couldn't remember his name so travis husky has done what are these called the uh, the black and white silhouettes and mm-hmm. that's chris kyle and it's amazing how you can take a picture or a profile or something and you can as long as you can you know who the person is like you can go oh my god that's chris kyle or ones that steve mcleod's done I've seen some with Madonna that you're like, is is that a weave? Mm-hmm. Travis Husky coming in with a flaming skull. Even the eye sockets has the yellow and yeah, see that. orange fire kind of happening. That's wild. Another one of Travis's, like I said, we're finishing up with him. Jaws. That's what I made it think of as Jaws. But Jaws obviously didn't have me blue on him, but he may have done that just for fun. But it's a nice shark. Like, super nice shark. I like how it's going up the rod. Mm-hmm. He's coming to attack the fish that he's catching, you know? Mm-hmm. The teeth, man. You can see all the little individual teeth. Travis Husky with an awesome fish. Got the details of the fins and everything. And, like, the fins are subtle. The little dot for the eye in there. Mm-hmm. With the little trim around it. Mm-hmm. And our last photo of the night, which I'm going to have to put this one in top three. for was my favorites tonight. Because it has the skull and the roses. This is just so nicely done. Just gorgeous. And I love that color green. Most people would have stuck with like a darker green, but he went really bright. That really stands out It stands well. out really nicely. Super bright red, super bright green. Not like a neon green, but like, I don't know, what do they call it? The crayon box. Like the, um, it's not the medium green. It's the, the grass green. Grass green. Grass green. Just beautiful. And that is everything that was contributed tonight and like i said i didn't put everything that i, ended, that I did because i was just doing initials like i i don't feel like i'm up to that caliber at all <laughs> i just you know to me i feel like i put crayons on my rod versus what they're doing so <laughs> just being honest <laughs> but overall there's a lot that you can do with weaves a hundred percent um anything really, really just whatever logos want. and pictures and silhouettes and cartoons and caricatures and, and sayings steve mcleod does like cups mm-hmm. to hold his paint pens and brushes and they're like literally three inch cups that he'll weave on or the p he does pvc a lot mm-hmm. too he does stuff on pvc and he'll send it to people as little gifts and like little cups that they yep. can put their tools and stuff into so maybe we don't want to weave on something really really tiny maybe we want to practice on pvc and then you can do a bigger picture totally acceptable as well Obviously, just don't do a little short thing because it's going to be a pain trying to get the threads stretched out. <clears throat> but weaves can be fun. Mark will argue argue with me all day long that weaves are easier than wraps are. And yes, technically, once you get it set up, it's just it's just moving thread back and forth. As long you just have to make sure you put number two back in number two slot over here, and also back on two slot over here, and not accidentally move them in a different slot. Because then you're screwed up because now two has two in it and two's not supposed to have two in it. So which which one was two and which one wasn't? Um, I've done that before. I know how to experience. I've moved them Speaking around. Speaking from experience. Speaking from experience. I always tell you my how much I suck. It's fine. Learn from me. Try not to do that. Um, but generally, the steps, great. I mean, and, and it's also one of those things where, you know, as long as you got the, the belt on to hold it, you can walk away from it when you need a break. Yeah. 
versus a rap, you got to make sure, oh, okay, I'm through the pass, and now I'm going to anchor this stuff down. Like, it's not going anywhere if it's, if it's held in those little slots. So, pretty, pretty fun little thing to try. You can get patterns from, like I said, Thread Art's got them in the back of the book. There are some places that, I think Mud Hole, they used to sell them. I don't know if they are doing it right now. Which ones? The left list patterns. They have marks actually on sale right now. Yeah, so you can get some from there where Mark has already put the left list together and there's a picture so you can see what it looks like and it's the step-by-steps and stuff in it. Um, you can make your own. You can use the Visual Weave or uh, Pick to Weave programs. Pick to Weave is really hard to find. Visual Weave you can get at Mudhole or you can also get it from Thread Central. And they both do basically the same thing. Or if you want to go about it the old school way, you can make it on graph paper. So multiple places to do it. Just remember each box represents one thread, one turn. Because your design threads are going from top to bottom. Your turns, rotations of your rod, are going from left to right, moving that way. Cannot leave out of here without mentioning. Yes. Doc has made a great tutorial DVD. Doc also has shared... A little bit of info on YouTube. I know he's got more tiger wraps and stuff on there, but I'm pretty sure he's got some stuff on weeds on there as well. But Jim Upton has a fantastic book. There's some resources out there. So let's get to the product of the night. Which is going to be all microwave guides. So we actually use these a lot. Um, that inshore rod that Mary was picking on me about for not finishing the guides mm -hmm. is going to have microwave guides on it. Her surf rods all have microwave 30 and 50s on it. Um, a lot of our inshore flounder rods get the microwave 12s on them because um, they just work. They actually do what they advertise. And we really enjoy building with them, to be honest. They'll come like this. If you look on the back, it's got what it provides and everything like that. But on the interior, just pop this open. Oh, no, don't open it. Ah. It will tell you how to lay it out up here based on the size of rod that you're doing. Now, obviously, once you put it on here based on this, it's based off of the preset rear grip section. So if your rear grip section doesn't match this, put it on there, go out and test it, play with it. Because um, a lot of the people that try to talk bad about microwave guides don't follow the instructions. They have a different rear grip length than what this is made for and designed for. And then they just put it on based on what this says and didn't read that, hey, you need to actually go test it. Then they say, hey, these don't work. They do work. You just don't know how to read. <laughs> or... We still followed recommendations, but we still need to make a, make a cast. You, you still, still need to make adjustments. Because like, you need to adjust it, because everything is a little different no matter what. But well, it depends a, on like, wall thicknesses, and it's all kinds of things that it depends on. But Put them on based on the suggested spacing, and then go out and actually test it with how you're going to fish it. But the most important spacing on those is the stripper and the, the second guide. Two to three guides, depending on which set it is. The rest of them, you can do whichever you, so you want You can space to. out how, however it needs to be done. But the first two to three, you need to keep fairly close to this as long as it's casting how it should. Yeah, and the whole concept is for it to hold the line control. So if it's not doing that, then you need to, you need to adjust. make some adjustments. I'd also like to thank our sponsors tonight. Foundation Outdoor Group, Mud Hole, American Tackle, all MHX and Pro products. They are fantastic stuff. I'm actually going to be starting to put together some fun little things on the side. You guys will see that in the upcoming future. And we're going to be taking off to Foley this week, which is really honestly just thanks, thanks to them for allowing me to be able to continue to keep teaching, for having Wes come along with me, and for us to be able to make it to all these events and help spread knowledge and just meet people and get to meet doc ski this weekend like i don't even know <laughs> i don't even know if i'm gonna be able to speak to the band because i'm just gonna be like hi <laughs> and i hi. might run away like i mean it's just like these are legends in the building but i really do appreciate them taking a chance on me to make me a brand ambassador and just be able to continue to keep doing what i do and or do what i love and helping other people learn at the same time if you're able to come to foley 
We are going to have a... Get in the vehicle and come down. We're going to be having a 10 by 20 booth space again. I'll be bringing back about half of my shop again. Uh, six wrappers and all of the stuff to jigs and foam and all that kind of stuff. Kind of like she's, what I had she's at the gonna bring the, She's going to bring down as much as she can pack because I work until we leave. Don't worry. I got this. <laughs> I don't have to take tables or chairs or anything this time. I did ask for that. But we're going to have a working booth where people can sit down and learn how to wrap plus my seminar. Which I need to plan that because I haven't planned that yet. So, But the goal is to get all that stuff packed up pretty much Tuesday, Wednesday. So i got a couple days to get that knocked out. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, really appreciate it. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow our content. We're actually going to be adding more videos on and how to learn about rod building and particular things on tutorials of different aspects of rod building into the YouTube channel. So, Bye!